Okay, so we're going to take a look at question 36 on the January 2016 Common Core Regions, but before that, I wanted to review the law of signs uh, formula. So if you take a look here, the formula is written in one of two ways. It doesn't matter which way. So you can write it like number one here, or you can write it like number two here. It doesn't matter if the sine of A um, is in the top of the fraction or in the bottom. But I do want to point out that in the formula, this capital A to lowercase a is referring to capital A, the angle, and then lowercase a is the side opposite angle A. So I'm looking at angle B, the B is the side opposite angle B, and then lowercase c is the side opposite angle C. So it's the sine of an angle over the side opposite is equivalent to the side of an angle over the length of the side that's opposite. So once again, we're going to take a look at two examples, one in which we're going to find a side length, so find AC. So I'm going to call ACX, okay? And to do that, um, I need, in using the law of sines, I need the angle opposite, which I have. And then, so it's going to be the sine of 22 degrees over length X. And I also need another side and angle that's opposite. So in order to use law of sines, you need two sides and two angles. Now in giving um, two sides, you need the si or angles that are opposite. However, if you're not told the angle opposite, you can add the two up that are given and subtract it from 180. So angle C, I do have side C. So that's going to be equal to the sine of angle C over 24. So if I take 180 and subtract 118 and 22, we get 40. So if I plug it in, um, the sine of 40 degrees over 24 is equal to the sine of 22 over x. Now we're going to do some of the calculations on the calculator. And again, we're going to round to the nearest tenth. So our cross product is going to be 24 times the sine of 22 degrees, and that equals x times the sine of 40 degrees. Divide by the sine of 40 degrees. These cancel out, and we get x equals. Now go ahead and do that calculation on your calculator. And I get 13.9868257. To the nearest 10, that 8 is going to bump, the, uh, bump that 9 up to a 0. So AC is approximately 14.0. Okay, so the next one before we take a look at question number 36. Uh, instead of finding the length of a psi, we're going to find the measure of an angle. So we're going to find the measure of angle C. And opposite C is 20. Okay, and then we do have another angle inside opposite, so we're good. We actually don't need the 24. Okay, find the measure of angle C. So I'm going to do the sine of 82 degrees over the length of the side opposite, which is 29, equals the sine of C over 20. So my cross product is going to be 29 times the sine of C equals 20 times the sine of 82. Divide by 29. And we have the sine of C equals 20 times the sine of 82 degrees over 29. So to find the measure of an angle, 
That's equal to the inverse sine, and we're going to type this in. And that'll tell us what our angle measure is. So you first have a calculator want to do the 20 sine of 82. Get that answer, divide it by 29, and then use your second sign, second answer button. And we get 43.07. Four zero eight eight five nine to the nearest tenth. The measure of angle C is approximately forty three point one degrees. Okay, now we're going to take a look at question thirty six in using the law of sines, and it's on the desktop. Okay, so Kathy wants to determine the height of the flagpole. Shown in the diagram below, she uses a survey instrument to measure the angle of elevation to the top of the flagpole and determines it to be 34.9 degrees. She walks 8 meters closer and determines the new measure of the angle of elevation to be 52.8 degrees. At each measurement, the survey instrument is 1.7 meters above the ground. So what we're going to do here um, is given this angle here is 52.8, so we're focusing in on this right triangle or overlapping right triangles. So our right angle here. If this is 52.8 in this triangle here, this is going to be 37.2 degrees. And with this angle being 34.9, this whole angle is 55.1 degrees. So if I subtract the 37.2 degrees, we'll get 17 0.9 degrees. So the process uh, for law of sines is we're going to focus in on this triangle right here. Just going to explain the process first if I can trace. We use law of sines to find the side, missing side or missing angle of a triangle that's not a right triangle. So I guess I should have said that to start the video. So for the law of sines, we have um, this angle right here, and we have the side opposite. And then given this angle right here, we're going to find this side opposite. So I'm going to call that x. And then once we know x, just to talk you through the process, we're then going to look at this triangle here and using this side x and an angle measure, we're then going to find y. Okay, so let's go back to the orange triangle. So I'm going to do the sine of 17.9 degrees over the side opposite is 8 equals the sine of 34.9 degrees over x. Now to do the math, we have this cross product here and this cross product, and at the end we'll have to divide um, the x sine of 17.9 by that sine of 17.9, so I'm going to write it in terms of x. So x equals 8 times the sine of 30.9, 34.9, over the sine of 17.9 degrees. So that's x. And then in the triangle that's blue, we're going to have, I'm going to use this angle right here, so I'll use sine. It's going to be the sine of 52.8 degrees. That's equal to y over x. Okay, opposite over hypotenuse. Okay. Now, the y is what I'm trying to find, so I'm going to take, I just wrote it as is now because I need to substitute this for my x. So I'm going to write what um, the cross product would be if I put this over 1. So x would be equal to, so be x times the sine of 52.8 is equal to y. And then I'm going to replace the x with... 8 sine 34.9 over the sine of 17.9 times 
the sine of 52.8 degrees. Just to show my steps, my thinking, and my work. So I need to just do all that calculation right now on the calculator. Okay? So when you do that, you should get y equals 11.8776-5162. And that's y. But don't forget, we need to find, um, going back to the question, determine the height of the flagpole. So here's y. We still need to add in this gap, which is the 1.7. So add in. 1.7, I'm going to write the answer up here, and our height is equal to 13.5776-5162. To the nearest tenth, the height is approximately 13.6 meters.